Good morning. Good morning. We're running a little bit late this morning. Our cameraman is in uh, Myrtle Beach, and so we had to wait on the backup cameraman. So <laughs> we're running just a little bit late, but we thank God that you're all here this morning, and we thank God for those that were patient and sticking with us this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us begin now our Sunday morning devotional with a opening song by Tracy, the Reverend Tracy Gant. December, but it is the third Sunday of Advent. And this morning we light the candle of joy and to light our candle and to uh, render our uh, Advent readings. We'll have uh, Reverend Tracy Ant and our beloved uh, guitar player, Jonathan Bootsy McLean. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
The third candle of Advent, the candle of joy, which is the pink candle. On the first Sunday of Advent, this place was a mess. And the cleanup crew was here last Sunday. So today we come to deck the halls because we want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season. So we come with lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition, but it lifts our hearts because it makes us feel like children again. We deck the halls because Jesus mm -hmm. is coming. Uh -huh. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said in Isaiah 61, 1 through 4, and 8 through 11, the spirit of the Lord, God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release the prisoners. 61 and 2. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. 3. To provide for those who mourn in Zion. To give them a garland instead of ashes. Mm -hmm. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. The mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. God will, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, no matter how far we feel from the spirit of a season. God promises to, de to decorate us with love and with joy. So we light these candles as a sign of our joy and the beautiful things of the season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things. The beauty of the heart and the soul. The beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We like this candle of joy because Jesus is coming. John 1, 6 through 8, 19 through 28. 1, 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 1, 7. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. 1, 8. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. 119. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? 120. He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am the Messiah. 121. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. 122. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? 123. He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Might make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, 124. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, 125. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah? Nor the prophet. 116. John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. 127. One who is coming after me, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. 128. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, come. I'm gonna come in. Oh, come, oh, come, oh, come, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. God bless you. And now we ask that you would prepare your heart for our pastoral prayer. 
And as every Sunday, we ask you, are those that you are those that you are concerned about this morning, we want you to share them with us. That they may be a part of all of our prayers, not just our prayer this morning, but when we pray during the week, let us remember those names that have been called and let us pray for them as well. Are there any this morning? Cass and Bernie Brock, Brock Allison Middleton and family, and Amen. Ruben Shea. Amen. Alan Frazier and Francis Kimber. Amen. Mary Watson and Jim Brown. Amen. We're going to ask now uh, that Reggie, our lay servant, we come this, at this time and lead us in our pastoral prayer. And as he comes, let us pray with him. Reggie. Good morning, all. So peace be with you again. This is indeed a time for prayer. You never know how coronavirus hits until it's close to home. Last Thursday, I got a phone call at work uh, from the school nurse that said that Peyton, which is why she's not here today, was exposed to a confirmed cases along with several other students. So she was quarantined at home and I'm happy to report this morning after testing Test came back negative. Everyone in the house. So I want to say to God be the glory. Great things that He has done. Amen. But let us keep in mind those that are continuing to suffer with this coronavirus. And we pray God's strength and help for them. And for the families that have been. Just one moment in time. This morning, God, we simply say thank you, Lord. We simply say thank you, Lord. Let your will be done today, Lord. Lord, we were able to get up out of our own bed, stretch our arms, was able to walk around the house this morning. Thank you for that, Lord. Because I stand here realizing that someone took their last breath last night. Someone met you on this morning, Lord. I realize, Lord, that I am blessed even to see the sunlight this morning. We're all blessed to see each other and love one another this morning. Again, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for the many things that you have given us, Lord, life. Even though we struggle sometimes, Lord, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us, Father. Yeah, and we trust and we lean on your word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, even as your children, as your child, Lord, we don't get it right all the time. We tend to look at things our way and think it's better, but you have a plan that's better for us. All the time. So, Father, we ask that you forgive us, Father. Forgive us and allow us to see it your way. Allow us, Father, to see the glory that you have for us, Father. Lord, we ask more of you and less of us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even in this year and in this coming year, Lord, and in these, in these times, we need more of you, Lord. Thank you for those that are here today. Father, you hear their prayers. You hear everyone's concern, Father. And Father, we thank you for peace right now. We thank you for the strength to endure what's going on. And Lord, while we're enduring, let us not forget to 
loving God neighbor. Let us not forget to care for one another, even though we have to distance ourselves and protect our, ourselves and our loved ones, Father. We mustn't stray from you. We mustn't leave your side because you have never left our side, Father. Yes, Father. Again, Lord, thank you for the many things you have done, Lord. Yes, Father, the word that's coming forth today, let it be of nourishment to our soul. Father, someone needs to hear a word from you today, Lord. And Father, we ask that your word strengthen us during this time. Strengthen our ambitions, our goals, so that we don't rely on ourselves, but we do rely on you, Father, that you made it all possible, that you are the reason that we are here today, either online or in person, Father. Again, we say thank you. Again, bless the word that's coming forth. And bless those that are online today. And Lord, after, the, after today, let us leave today better than when we arrived. Yes. Let us leave in a way that we will bring people closer to you. Yes. Because you have been so good to us, Lord. Yes. All these things we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. And for his sake. Yes. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow our heads? Eternal Lord, we give you thanks again for this day, this time together, on this, your day, the Lord's day. We ask, oh God, that you would just come into our hearts and minds right now. We just ask, Lord, that you would speak to us, that your spirit would fall fresh upon us, that we might hear your voice. For we know, Lord, in hearing from you, we'll have all that we need in hearing from you, Lord. You will tell us that we, we need to know. Mm -hmm. And Father, we already give you the praise and give you the thanks. Because everything is of you. And we can never give you thanks enough for all that you do. But we ask at this moment, at this time, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 So this morning we lit the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. I would like to read 
for you these verses of scripture from Philippians, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. Philippians 4 and 4. And it's a verse of scripture that we're all familiar with. We've heard it time and time again. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say again, rejoice. What is it that gives you joy this morning? Think about that for a moment or two. What is it? What is it that gives you joy, that brings joy to your heart? I mean, I think that many of us will say this morning that our family is a source of joy. Because strong family relationships can be joy for us, especially in our times of trouble. Family is always there. For some of us, it may be our daily activities. I, I don't know how many people that I've talked to that say golfing brings them joy. A gardening in the yard. My next door neighbor, he, he was a former truck driver, and he said that he experienced great joy in driving that giant diesel rig down the highway, hauling heavy freight. Maybe for Reggie, that's a source of joy, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe we find joy in watching the Cowboys win. <laughs> Maybe we find joy in watching the Cowboys lose. Maybe some other activity. So again, I ask you, what is it that brings you joy? Mm -hmm. A definition of joy is a positive or pleasant emotion. Another word for joy is delight. And we express joy in all kinds of ways. Gladness, contentment, cheerfulness. But is that what joy really is? You see, if, if that's our definition of joy, and that's the definition that the world gives us, then anybody can experience that kind of joy. Because that kind of joy is dependent on things. But can we depend on things? The problem is, if we are dependent on things as a source of joy, our joy is unsafe, our joy is insecure. Hmm. You see, we risk losing joy when it's tied to something or somebody. For instance, if we lose a family member, then we become broken hearted full and filled with grief. That, that's natural. Mm -hmm. Think about all the great losses in your life and the things that, that and the way that it made you feel. My neighbor talks about when the truck broke down on the side of the road. And, he, and how he became worried and concerned because now his life is in danger with the car speeding by and, and people not paying attention, they can easily cause a, a really bad accident. Mm -hmm. If the Cowboys lose, we get depressed. <laughs> if the Cowboys win, some of us get depressed. <laughs> and sometimes we, we, with our losses, we lose the ability to even have the security of knowing that things are going to be all right. Mm -hmm. However, in the midst of the worst of life, in the midst of what life throws at us, in the midst of heartbreak, in the midst of sadness, in the midst of fear, it is still possible to experience joy if our source of joy is eternal joy and not physical joy. Mm -hmm. My friends, we live in an uncertain world, and 2020 has certainly proved that, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. We live in a world that's filled with turmoil, a world that's filled with adversity. 
We live in a world where we frequently experience setbacks, suffering, and sadness. We need a source of joy that transcends all those things. We need a source of joy that will not let you go. We need a source of joy that, that, that if there's something or someone has let us down, we can still feel confident and know that it hasn't stolen our joy. We need eternal joy. The Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians has been referred to as the epistle of joy. And when you get a chance today, or maybe during the week, I encourage you to read all four chapters of short book. Read all four chapters. It's an amazing story. And again, it's referred to as the epistle of joy. You see, in this short letter, the word joy appears 16 times. Paul tells us that we can experience joy because of God's grace that is at work in our lives. And we can also experience joy because of the promise of eternal life. He goes on to say that there is joy in Christian unity as we work together in God's church. But more importantly, as we read Paul's letter, he tells us, and we soon discover, that joy is not even dependent on those things that I just mentioned. Because when we have the joy of Christ, we can experience joy in the midst of suffering. Mm -hmm. This is because our source of joy is beyond anything that this world can throw at us. Remember that song we love to sing? This joy that I had, mm -hmm. the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me. And if the world didn't give it, then the world can't take it away. Paul is telling us that God's joy does not change with circumstances. Not when our source of joy is Jesus. It doesn't change with circumstances because Jesus is the same. Jesus is eternal. So when we experience, so then we can experience joy in every situation we encounter. Because Jesus doesn't change. Listen to what the Bible says about it in Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Again, he does not change. And because he does not change, he's able to be the source of joy in an unchanging, unending, indestructible world. A destructible world, I meant to say. You see, our, our faith is based on that personal relationship with Christ. And this personal relationship then becomes the source of our joy. In other words, where Christ is present, joy is always available. Where Christ is present, joy is always available. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, even if your heart is sad, even in the midst of your sadness, even in the midst of the darkest day, even in the midst of troubles, trials, and tribulation, even in the midst of the coronavirus, joy is available. The joy that Paul is talking about is much, much more than just a positive attitude or pleasant emotion. The joy which the people of God should always be displaying is a joy that comes from holiness and pureness. And that alone is Jesus. Joy in the Lord enables us to enjoy all that God has given us. He, we are able to enjoy the good and the bad. Because we can have joy again in the midst of our sorrows, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of whatever is going on around us. Jesus doesn't change and our joy doesn't change. God, God's joy rises above circumstances because it's focused on Jesus. We all know we live in a broken, fallen world. 
And as we live in this world, we encounter things like being mistreated by people. Especially people that are supposed to love us. We encounter things like being treated unfairly at work or in school. We're constantly being let down by people. In other words, we're subject to, be, to, 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 to get things like cancer. We're subject to heartaches, problems. We're subject to diabetes. Because we live in a world that is broken. We live in a world that is sinful. We live in a world that has fallen. We live in a world where those that love us die. But in all of these circumstances, in all of these situations, Apostle Paul says, we are still able to experience the joy of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Now these are not words spoken by a man who was unfamiliar with suffering. If we know anything about Paul, we know that Paul suffered through most, most of his ministry. Paul could speak of joy in the mindset of suffering because he followed Christ. The same Christ who humbled himself. The same Christ who cared for others more than he did himself. The same Christ that went to the cross and died for our sins. This is who Paul followed. And that's why he could speak of joy in the midst of his suffering. You see, Paul understood that as a follower of Christ, Life struggles can be overcome with a heart of joy simply because of Christ. So again, my friend, regardless of our present circumstances, we have hope that springs forth from joy. A joy that the world cannot give us. A joy that the world cannot take away from us. And we especially see this in Paul this morning. Let me share with you what was going on with Paul as he wrote, he wrote those words, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Paul had been arrested. And he was arrested on false charges. He was in jail in Jerusalem when he writes those words. And he'd been in jail for over two years now. Paul was not even allowed to defend himself against the charges that were brought against him. And after two years, Paul decides, well, I'm a citizen of Rome. And under Roman law, a citizen who felt that they were not getting a fair trial could appeal to the emperor. And this is what Paul did. He appealed to Nero. And that was like jumping out of the frying pan into the fire. You see, by appealing to the emperor, Paul understood that whatever the emperor decided would be final. And that the emperor could impose whatever punishment he wanted. Since Paul had already been accused of being a troublemaker, Paul knew that this was enough for him to be sentenced to death if he was found guilty. Because the last thing the emperor wanted was someone stirring up and causing dissension in the empire. So this appeal was somewhat risky, but it was what Paul thought he had to do in order to win his freedom. So he made this appeal to Nero, and he was sent to Rome. Like I said, it was like jumping out of the fire, out of the frying pan into the fire. Because when he arrived in Rome, he had to wait on house arrest for another two years. They wouldn't even hear his appeal. He was under house arrest, on trumped up charges, deprived of his freedom, and quickly running out of money. Paul's future was uncertain. There was a very real possibility that the emperor would find him guilty 
and sentence him to death. He didn't know what his future held, yet as we read this letter, we don't, we don't find words of bitterness, we don't find words of gloom or despair, but rather we find words of hope, we find words of encouragement, we find words of joy. Paul wrote, rejoice in the Lord always, and I say again, rejoice. You see, it, it, it's one thing to say those words when everything is, is going all right, when it's a bright sunny day and we are out taking a stroll uh, in the sunshine, enjoying the day. But Paul was experiencing a very hard time, a time of persecution, a time of uncertainty when he says to us, rejoice. It is easy, or not easy, when things are falling down around us. It is not easy to have joy. So why was Paul able to experience joy in the midst of uncertainty? You see, for Paul, his faith is one of joy and of grace. Being saved by grace and reconciled unto God rejoiced in, resorted in Paul's ability to say rejoice in the Lord, and I say again rejoice. You see, my friends, when we have experienced experience God's grace and we stand firm in our faith, we too can experience joy. We too can live with the freedom uh, uh, from anxiousness, from worries, and from fears. Paul was able to do this because his joy, again, was centered in Jesus. Jesus was the source of his joy. Jesus was the source of his freedom. Jesus was why he didn't worry about even running out of finances to support himself while on life's arrest. Mm -hmm. Jesus was his joy. To know Jesus is to know that he will carry you through life's pains. He will carry you through life's obstacles. He will carry you through life's uncertainties. And we too can experience that joy that Paul is talking about when we make Jesus and not things the source of our joy. Paul sums up his letter by saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And listen to what he says, how he ends this. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Union with God as our Savior, union with God as the source of our joy is how we can establish and have eternal joy in the midst of all that is going on around us. That is why we can sing joy to the world. The Lord has come, not only because he is coming to the world, but he's coming to our hearts. And then he becomes the source of our joy. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
On last Sunday, uh, I forgot to share with you the December birthdays. And so I'm doing that this morning. Uh, December 1st was Stoney Jackson. December 2nd was Michael Lampkin. December 3rd, uh, Mr. Julius Williams. December 5th was Tanya Smith. December 6th, uh, Justin Ansley. December 12th, Connie Fielding Person. December 18th, Renee Ford Thompson. December 19th, Irving Sheck. December 20th, Inez Noisette. December 20th again, my daughter Crystal Moses. December 22nd, Jamie Rivers. And of course, the most important date of December, December 25th, the birthday of our Lord and our Savior. Shall we sing happy birthday to those born in the month of December? Y'all ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. Is, has been hospitalized and she wanted to make sure that you know that it's not the coronavirus because she doesn't have the virus. Uh, she's having some problems with her lungs and she uh, uh, spoke with her. She sounds good and she's feeling good. She's a real good frame of mind. But keep her in your prayers. They kept her overnight and uh, uh, she's still there. So pray for her. She's in St. Francis uh, for those of you that may want to give her a call, room 206, room 206. So when you call, just ask for 206 and uh, they'll, they'll uh, uh, connect you with her room. We ask that you keep all of our sick and shut-in members in your prayers. And especially during this time of the year, I know a card, a, a phone call, uh, any type of communication will be of uh, um, heartwarming and cheerfulness to their souls. Uh, especially Mrs. Powell, uh, who had a little fall a little while ago, but uh, she's doing, I didn't speak to her this week, but uh, the last I spoke with her uh, and, and, uh, and, and her daughter, uh, she was doing well. So keep them in your prayers as well. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, that's Stephen. Yeah, that's Steve. That's Stephen, all the way from Florida. <laughs> and good to see you. I don't like that New York mask you wear in there, <laughs> but welcome anyway. You're in the house of the Lord. So <laughs> anyway, God bless you. God bless. You. Good to see you as well. Yeah. Amen. If all hearts and minds are on one accord, let us stand now and be dismissed. What's the song we sing? God be with you.
May the peace of God be with you. May God watch over and protect you this coming week and whatever you do and wherever you go. May the joy of the Lord be with you. In the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Amen.